if you have anterior right rib pain, what do you think you would do? LAO. You actually would do an LAO, correct. And I did that on purpose to show you how it reverses. Those x-rays will be kind of inverse to each other. We go from LPO to REO. But I'll show you all that as we move on. Um, it just all depends on what side we're elongating. PA obliques, we elongate the side up. AP obliques, we elongate the side that is down. Also, it's going to be very important to pay attention to where our markers are on these exams. Make sure that we as techs mark them correctly because doctors will use those markers to help determine what position you did and where you're showing the pain of the patient is. It is going to change on where we mark from the PA obliques to the anterior obliques. Just go ahead and write this down because we'll expand on this in a second though. When it comes to marking your oblique rib x-rays, no matter what we're looking at, we're always going to mark the side that is down. So that's whether we're doing the PA obliques or AP obliques, we always mark the side down. And I'll show you why in a second. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to determine what you're looking at. Always mark the side down on your obliques for ribs. That's for ribs, by the way, not all your obliques. So once again, we're going to hit on these upper anterior ribs and PA. We're also going to do upper AP ribs, lower AP ribs, and then both sets of those obliques. You'll notice missing from the list, I'll get your question in just a second, Shemenga. Um, you'll notice what's missing from the list is the unilateral AP ribs. That is a position that exists, but they have omitted, they have removed that because it's become such an obsolete exam. The majority of facilities will do just the bilateral PA ribs where you get both sides, or the bilateral AP where you get both sides. In the past, you had the option of just doing one side, probably done that one side. But that has since gone away. We're not focused on that anymore. We can remove that from the required curriculum. I'll get you a second, Monty. You should make the question first. Um, you said for the AP oblique ribs, elongate the side up. Mm -hmm. Don't write that down yet. We're going to get to that specifically. I was just talking about the marker for now. You always mark the side down okay. for all of the leaks. Honestly? So, are we still doing yes. unilateral and lateral? Mm -hmm. Are y'all learning that in Yeah. I'll show it be. I'll tell them to remove that. You should not be. That's been removed. You should not worry about unilateral ribs anymore. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about obliques, because obliques are kind of a unilateral when you're focused on one side. I'm talking about like an AP or PA unilateral. Oh, yeah, not obliques, guys. Not obliques. Let me, let me make sure that's clear. Okay, so you're not doing those in lab then? Not the AP. Just the obliques, Just right? the obliques. Okay, yeah, let me let me make sure that's clear. When I say unilateral, I'm referring to only a PA or AP exam. What you used to be able to do is just do one side and come make down to it in an AP or PA. The only unilateral exam we do is the obliques still. So I'm sorry, I didn't specify that a little better. Johns? When you mark... When you're doing a unilateral oblique, you're marking the sides as elevated, right? No, that's, I'm gonna show you why in a second. We, for oblique ribs, we're only marking the side down. But the for both, for both, you're always marking the side down touching. Mm -hmm. we, there's a reason for that, and I'll show you all the images. That's how we determine if we're looking at an REO versus an LPO and vice versa. Mm -hmm. okay. We mark the side down, just trust me for now. I'll show you why. Because in lab, we learned this. Yeah. That should not that should not be how you do it in lab. I'll make sure they're corrected on that. There's a very specific reason for that. And the reason being, I'll show you, it'll make sense on the images, guys. If we always mark the side up, we cannot determine on an image if we're looking at REO versus LPO. They would look synonymous with each other. There's a reason for always marking the side down. I'll, and I'll explain that as we get through the slides here. I'll make sure they know that. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll tell Ms. Boney and Mr. Fong. That's per news. <laughs> We used bond trigger last year, which is different. The only time yes. we didn't mark the side up was unilateral oblique, is that right? Yeah, the, mm -hmm. he said to mark the side down. Oh, well, that's for... No, for oh. unilateral, it was, it was like if you did an RAO and you're looking at the left side, then we mark the left. Yeah, but he's saying to mark the right. Still do not, trust me. Still you have to mark RAO. Trust me on this. Because if you do RAO, this lets him know. Just trust me on this for now. Okay. I'm, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. Like I said, that's the way we used to teach it, but this is the new Merrill's edition. So just trust me on this for now. I'll explain it as we move on. All right, guys, let's start with the PA upper ribs. And that's not their fault. That's something I failed to communicate. Well, I think the reason why he said that was because the, cause then the light will be here, and then so where would you put the marker? You can't put the right on the left. You still can't. Just, just trust me. Just trust me. Trust the process. 
Just trust me. <laughs> We're going to get there. All right, guys. So uh, PA ribs, very similar to what kind of exam we've done before, guys? Yes. PA chest. What's the key difference? Well, most of these will be done at 40 as opposed to 72. You do have the option of 72 or 40 per the text. But once again, if we're going for optimization purposes, we're gonna go for that 40, because putting the SID at 40 is gonna show those ribs off a lot more clear as opposed to that 72. Why would you opt for the 72? Well, let's say you just really wanna get it all in one shot and have to avoid, and avoid doing the lowers. You're pretty much guaranteed to get it all in one shot if you do 72, because it's gonna make it all smaller on the film. It's gonna reduce that magnification factor give you a full image. So really it's just personal preference as a technologist. Me personally, I stick with the 40 because what's the star of our show here? The ribs. the ribs. And what are hard to look at on radiographs? What fractures are hard to see? Ribs. So for me, ethically as a tech, I want to give that doctor the easiest time of identifying those ribs properly. A PA at 40 inches will do that better versus a 72. But once again, it is ultimately your choice as a tech of how you want to do that x-ray. So, optimize guys, upright as always, uh, is what I usually say. There is gonna be a slight difference here depending on what we're focused on. And I'll show you as we talk about um, these x-rays coming up, about we do the PA upright versus the AP lower, so on and so forth. That may not make sense now, but I'm gonna get to that. For now, PA, by the way, do we ever do a PA lower? No. no. Why not? Because the lower ribs, the 11 and 12 do not connect anteriorly. It'd be a waste of time. That's not going to do us any good. So we only do a PA upper. Thus, because we're only doing a PA upper, even though you see this guy laying down, this would be the only one where the upright's preferred. Versus the AP, it's going to change depending on what we're looking at. Keep that in mind. I'm going to get to that in a second. So PA upper, optimized upright, but you have the option of laying down if the patient cannot stand. So PA upper, optimized standing, but you have the option of laying down if they cannot stand. Now, why is the upright preferred, guys? That's gonna allow that diaphragm to descend the lowest portion, and we'll also demonstrate if there's any air fluid levels. Cause, believe it or not, a lot of people go in for what they think are rib fractures, and they actually have pathologies in the lungs, causing that pain. You have pain in the lungs, and you don't really know what's going on. You may think it's just rib pain. It could be something totally different. So we're gonna be thorough and check everything out, which is why the upright's preferred. We might be able to see if there's fluid, nodules, other things going on in those lungs. Thus, upright is going to be more optimal. And once again, that's what's recommended when the patient's condition permits. That's your more optimal radiograph. PA upper upright ribs. Positioning should look very familiar, guys. Putting the hands on the hips or having them wrap their arms around the bucky. Why? There were no scapula out of the way. Same exact reason. Even though we're focused on the ribs. It could be lung problems. We want to still see those lungs nice and clear. Where's your centering for this, guys? T7. Still at T7. That's right. That's right. Are we still using the fingers or are we learning to eyeball it yet? Eyeball. Some of us are eyeballing it now. You do enough time, you start getting that x ray vision. You can see it without having to palpate. Very good. All right, guys, so here we go. MSP, of course, centered to the grid for our bilateral ribs. We're not doing the unilateral anymore. We're going to center the affected side on a longitudinal plane, midway between the MSP and lateral surface, if we do still do unilateral. But this bullet point here, guys, this is if you work at an old facility and they still ask for unilateral ribs. Once again, we do not do this anymore for PAs. This has been removed. But for some reason, you work at an old facility and they're still asking for it, that would be how you center for the unilateral. So you can write it down just for reference, but you don't need to actually know that. All right, on um, top of the cassette, a little bit different than a chest. Because chest, what do we say? About one and a half to two inches, right? Mm -hmm. For ribs, it's just going to be at one and a half. Why? You want to account for as many of those lower ribs as possible. Try to get it all on one if you can. So we're going to go slightly lower if we're using that light technique. So it is saying you can put the light or the top of the cassette one and a half inches above the shoulders if you don't opt that T7 method. But you should still go with the T7 anyway. That's the better way to do it overall. Shoulders are the same, transverse plane, rest hands, palms out on hips. Why? We still want to move those scapula out of the way, like I just said, because we're also looking at the lungs on these x-rays, even though it's a ribs x-ray. Just being thorough, checking everything out. And if patient is prone, rest head on chin, 
give them a little pillow because as you can imagine, it's very uncomfortable. Don't let them just sit there on the chin on the hard table. Give them something to put the chin on, a little towel or something, and make sure their head's not turned to the side. It has to be on the table. Why? Well, you tell me. Why wouldn't I want to turn the patient's head to the side for comfort on that X-ray? Might take the rotation of the That's one reason. But what else? Which, the rotation would be a factor, yes, but what else? You said the head? Why, like, why, would I not want, why would I not turn the head for comfort on a PA rib? It might get in the way of the T1. I mean, it might get, so the chin might actually get in the way yeah. of that first rib. Yeah. Depending on how large the chin is and depending on how they lay their head down. The so we have some superposition as well as that rotation factor. So we want that chin nice and straight on the table and, of course, looking straight ahead when we're standing. Light and the top of the IR as well. But if you're lined up, they're going to be at the same level. Light should be matching the top of your set. <coughs> do, we, uh, do we still misalign those lights for the Buckies? <laughs> yeah, that was my biggest problem in school. I, I was notorious for not lining up that light for Bucky. That was my, yeah, everyone has their Achilles heel, that was my Achilles heel. Lining up that black yeah. my, my teacher traumatized me so much for that, I never made that mistake again. Oh man, my teacher would tear me up for that. She was brutal. Central Ray, guys, once again, a very familiar spot, perpendicular to T7. We should be very familiar with that spot. That's going to demonstrate the seventh, I'm sorry, if we want to demonstrate the seventh, eight, and nine more clear, there's an alternative position, though I've never seen a tech in my entire career do this, nor have I ever done this. Normally, you're going to see them just fine. But let's say the doctor says, I really can't see seven, eight, and nine very good. Can you really optimize that area of the ribs? There's the way you do it right there, guys. An angle of 10 to 15 degrees, CAWDAD, which will help elongate those a little further, you want better visualization. Once again, never seen that, never used that, but it does exist. If you have that 1% chance, they ask for that. But only if they ask for that. Only if they ask. Otherwise, don't worry about that. That's just overexposing your patient. All right, respiration, guys. Just like a chest x-ray, suspended at the end of full inspiration. We do how many breaths? To just like a chest x-ray guys because once again why we're also looking at the lungs here not just the ribs so second full inspiration hold it take your x-ray that should be a 14 by 17 if we're doing bilateral once again just for reference if you were going to do unilateral you're going to collate to just the area of interest but this has since gone away don't worry about that it's just for reference if you work at an old facility it still asks for it <coughs> Why is the diaphragm compressed at full inspiration? Does it get sad? Because it goes down. Goes, the it air goes, goes out, it collapses. Because what happens when you breathe in, guys? The lungs do what? Like a balloon. And they inflate, thus the muscle relaxes. It goes down or depresses. It's not feeling sad. It's a very depressing day with clouds up there, but you know. That joke went nowhere. I don't have my group today, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. <laughs> that was dad joke. That was dad joke cringe level there, guys. I'm sorry. Was that the first dad joke of the year? Mm. Is it? <laughs> was it? I think I so. Know. I think so, because you have it all of it. 
The sugar crush. One day you're gonna one day you're gonna appreciate my dad jokes. I'm just saying. This stuff's gonna pop in your head during your registry and when you're a tech, like you're leaping up that diaphragm getting really sad and depressed. You'll, you'll never forget it now. Alright. What are we gonna see for our PA ribs, guys? Well, first off, we do PA to extenuate the interior ribs. Thus, what are our main structures shown? Anterior ribs above the diaphragm. PA upper ribs is done primarily, even though we see both, primarily for anterior ribs above the diaphragm. Ooh, that's a good question. All right, so evaluation criteria, what do you wanna see, guys? You want the entire first through ninth ribs with the posterior portions lying above the diaphragm. We also want the entire one through seven anterior ribs above the diaphragm. So let me say it again, one through nine posterior portions, one through seven anterior portions. That can be a little tricky there. This is for PA upper ribs, one through nine posterior, one through seven anterior. And you said this was with orthostatic or? Um... This is a, just a full inspiration, holding your breath. If we're doing those unilaterals, once again, we want the affected side in its entirety, but once again, that's just a reference point for you. I shouldn't have put that in red. Don't, don't worry about focusing on that. It should just be in black right there. It's unilateral, we're only gonna look at the affected side. And if need be, evidence of that proper collimation. Remember, if you have a very thin patient, guys, don't leave that light wide open. Go ahead and collimate that in, especially for ribs. The more you can tightly collimate on ribs, guys, the more those ribs are gonna pop on that x-ray. That extra light is gonna make them get more foggy and cloudy, so to speak. You can just see more in the lungs. So looking closely while you're right, guys, can you see those anterior portions on the x-ray? You gotta learn to develop an eye for that. Do you see both, posterior versus anterior? Mm -hmm. Let's look together. Where's the first rib? Right there. Mm -hmm. There's the posterior. There's the anterior. You see it? Mm -hmm. Posterior, anterior. Second rib, posterior portion, curves around, and there's the anterior. You see it? Mm -hmm. And why does it keep ending right here? Because <coughs> that costochondral union where the cartilage begins, guys. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Might be easier to look on the TV screen. See how those anterior portions end? About halfway to the lungs? That's what we want to see on that PA upper ribs, which is also why we want to do the 40 inches preferably and also collimate when we can. It's going to help that pop a little better. So PA upper is at 40. You have the option of 72 and 40, but it's better at 40. <coughs> All right, let's go to our AP ribs, guys. So if PA ribs are going to really focus on anterior, what are AP ribs going to really focus on? Posterior. posterior portions. Why? That's what's closest to the IR. Always remember, we are focusing on what's touching the IR. That's the portion we're looking at. So upright or recumbent, once again, this is going to be a little different than PA. Where PA is, we always want them to stand if possible. The AP is going to change the thing what we're looking at, guys. It's preferred to have an upright for the upper portions, so that diaphragm drops lower. But remember what I said for AP, we do it lower AP ribs to show those 11th, 11th and 12th ribs. We do an AP lower. You can still do it standing, and I'm sure y'all do it standing in lab, it's okay. But if you wanna optimize that radiograph, guys, it's recommended to have them lie on their back for the lower, because it's gonna have gravity assist moving that diaphragm further out of the way, and really let those ribs pop a little better on that radiograph. Once again, you have choices, but it's always about, do I want to optimize my radiograph? How good do I want it to look? Which I hope that's something you think about, because we're never going to have that mindset, once again, of just good enough. We always want to think about ways to improve it and optimize it for our reputations, and of course for the patients as well. So let me just go ahead and state that again. AP ribs, for the upright AP ribs, it's preferred to have them stand, to have that diaphragm move lower and out of the way. For the AP lower, although they can stand, it's preferred to lie them down on their back to let gravity assist in moving the diaphragm further out of the way to really show those 11th and 12th ribs better. Making sense? You have the choice once again, but once again, it's also about what's the optimal way of doing it. So it's not the only way, but there is typically a better way when we talk about quality, quality of the radiograph. Question? Mr. Zamiju, for all, all along we've learned that we make this patient stand so that the gravity can um, show us the line also of water and air and everything. 
So how come here we need to find, and how does the, how does the diaphragm move? How so once again, do? the reason being, I'm not saying that one method is correct and one is wrong. This is about what's considered the best way for giving your best looking radiograph. So you have the option of standing and laying down. You can do it either way, that's not incorrect. But if you want the prettiest radiograph, if you're doing upper ribs, it's better to stand them. If you're doing lower ribs, it's better to lay them down. The reason we stick with having you have them stand and lab is because it's easier just to go from AP to lower and just make it faster for you, especially when you get the cast on. That's more of a speed optimization for you guys. But we're talking about quality purposes. This is what's considered best. Make sense? You said the uh, AP ribs demonstrates uh, posterior? posterior aspects of all the ribs. Okay. All right. So for this one here, guys, same exact positioning essentially as a PA. We still want to get those arms out of the way. If we are standing up, we're still gonna put the hands on the hips and rotate the shoulders forward, get those scapula out of the way. If we're lying down though, it's gonna change. We want to actually bring the arms up behind the head like you see this guy doing here. That's gonna allow us to do the same uh, action of moving those scapula out of the way, help optimize that radiograph. It still recommends one and a half inches for that light and set to be above the shoulders. Um, once again, this is in red because that's considered the best way to do it. Resting the hands on the hips and rolling shoulders forward. If they have the option of doing this if they're lying down for comfort purposes, both will get those scapula out of the way and have to get a better image. Of course, centering guys, we're still at T7. Uh, also, keep in mind, as you can see, if they're laying on a table like this, let's say it's a trauma patient, you're gonna use AP ribs. You can't really palpate for T7. How else would you find T7 on an AP? What's the other way we can do that? Find the jugular notch, which we should be very familiar with now, and how far inferior do we go below the jugular notch? Three inches. Three inches is another way to find that T7. T7. Do not rely on, I've heard some people teach this way, say, oh, we'll just put it on the nipple line. Well, that's not reliable because not all people's nipples lie in the same plane. So you can't really rely on that. Go with the jugular method. Jugular notch method that's going to be a lot more efficient. Trust me on that. What about the axilla? Axilla is more reliable. You can't use axilla too. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, me personally, I would go with the jugular notch though. You know, if you get the wrong tissue of the axilla, it's going to throw you off. Jugular notch is just like, you know, it's there, it's going to be perfect going three inches below it. You can't miss it. make sure you put the over on for the day. <laughs> don't want to make everyone pass out with your stinky armpits. That was a little better. I'm in full dad joke territory today. Y'all can groan. I, I don't get offended to groan like dad jokes. I know they're bad. At least I got a couple of grins out of that one. <laughs> How's the coffee this morning? It's good. Some Vietnamese coffee. I was doing as a gift from a fellow fellow from a C team program. It's pretty good. Getting strong. Where are we still centering? Centering still at T seven, which is what we're going to talk about right here coming up. Oh, this is lower ribs first, though, guys. So lower ribs before we get to the centering again. So keep in mind, guys. Um, I didn't mention this for PA ribs upper. So for both your PA upper and your AP upper, it is recommended to have that cassette lengthwise overall to account for as many of those ribs as possible. Unless you have a very broad patient and they have a very large barrel shape, shaped chest, that's the only time you would offer that crosswise. But when we do the AP lower, we are gonna always go ahead and put that at crosswise, no matter what. It will not be a lengthwise cassette, it'll be crosswise and as you all know in lab, it can be a little difficult to center for because you've got to find the xiphoid and the crest and center between the two. If you're having trouble with that, one little thing that I used to do in school that helps a lot for me personally, just put the lower edge of your IR at the crest. And that is essentially right between the xiphoid process and the crest. So if that's not working out for you, look at the light, a little light trick for you. Bottom of the cassette, bottom of the light, at the crest. And that's per your book. They recommend that as well. 
but the exact steering would be half of the zygoid process and the lower rib margin, if you want to be more precise. Me personally, I like using that crest method. A little more reliable, especially if you have patients with a lot of tissue there, it's hard to find that lower rib margin in the zygoid process. That might be a little easier time. That's for the lower AP ribs. Yes? For this one? Because you're using a 10 by 12. Are y'all using 10 by 12s? For this one, you should be using 10 by 12s. We're not doing crosswise. You should be doing crosswise. Once again, this is a little. I gotta get with them. This is some. This is some holdovers from Bond Trigger. I apologize for that. Our test time is next week. And it's 14 by 17. I'm gonna, don't. I'll fix it. Don't worry. Chill out. And it's 14 okay. by 17. Huh? For the real? For the upper. Let me make sure I'm not lying. Yeah, because the, the lower. Let me make sure I'm not lying. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang See, on. There you go. You just passed it. That's there you go. I might be thinking about something in the past. Well, too. you got to do it. It is 14 by 17. I'm sorry. No more Vietnamese coffee for you. <laughs> I still get coffee in some of the bond triggers. Yeah, I, so I apologize. So, yeah, it's 14 by 17, but still crosswise. Mm -hmm. Now, you said use the axilla. Yes, you can. But me personally, I find it be more reliable to use the crest. The mm -hmm. I thought that axilla could throw you off, especially if a patient has a lot of tissue up there. Use the wrong portion of the axilla and completely mess up your centering. But do make it does need to be crosswise, guys. That is correct. It does need to be crosswise. So lengthwise for upper, crosswise for lower. It's the only bad thing about switching books. Get these little mix up like this. What's our regard to guinea pigs for Merrill's? <laughs> that's going to be better for you in the long run. Trust me, that's what the registry bases their info on. Which is why we switched. <laughs> See, I could have said, oh, I know that. <laughs> Humility is better. You meant me wrong. Well, the seniors are still like, they're ready. The seniors have, so the seniors, I've been having to supplement a lot of material with the Merrill's. Oh. And make a lot of changes, which has been hard for them because they learn primarily a bond trigger. So it's been kind of rough on them, but I've been getting it fixed for them, thankfully. So. But when they take their registry, is it going to be? It's going to be based on Merrill stuff. I've been, I've been having to make a lot of corrections for them. As I teach you guys and I see new stuff, I'll usually let them know in the following class. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So for the upper ribs, where are we putting our central ray? Still a T7 for the lower, halfway between that design point process and lower rib margin. We are using a 14 by 17 cassette. Lengthwise for the upper, crosswise for the lower. Don't worry about that unilateral ribs. We're not doing that anymore. Now, guys, put a big star on this because this is an easy point to miss in your tests. Look at how these respiration instructions change between the upper and the lower. For upper ribs, full inspiration, full lungs. But for lower, because it's like an abdomen x-ray, it's going to be on expiration. So, inspiration for upper ribs, expiration for lower ribs. I would put a big star on that. It's an easy mistake to make on your test. You can guarantee that will be on your tests. You need to know the difference between the two. say, um, I know it's the same 14 by 17. One of the reasons I prefer 10 by 12 for lower is because for me personally, it gave me better images and less exposure to the patients. 14 by 17 on lower ribs, one thing I would really recommend you do is collimate because you're probably going to have a lot of excess light in that, especially if it's crosswise on the lower ribs. So I would go ahead and collimate in really good on that to optimize your image if you're going to use 14 by 17.
right, so what are we looking for, guys? Because these are all AP, we are focused on the posterior aspects of the ribs. That's the area of the point, that's the area the patient is having pain in. So, we want the ribs above the diaphragm to be the first to attempt posterior. For ribs below the diaphragm, we want eight through 12. So for the AP upper, we want one through 10 at least. For the AP lower, we want eight through 12. Eight through 12. We should be able to visualize those clearly through the lungs or the abdomen, depending on which one we're doing. And once again, that collimation is gonna play a large key in helping those ribs pop. This is an example of an X-ray that they did not do very well on their technique. Um, as you can see, well, you tell me, what's the main problem with this x-ray? It's, it's way too dark on the lungs, right? What do y'all think they did wrong? The yeah, mass increased. Most likely, I heard someone say mass. The mass is way too high on this x-ray. And as you can see, if you have too high of mass, it makes those lungs too dark, almost black, and that's going to make those lungs fade out of view. So it's very important to get that technique correct. If you're unsure about technique, I hate to say this, use AEC. <laughs> what is it? What? <laughs> That's why I said if you're really unsure about your techniques, use AEC when it comes to ribs because otherwise this will be a result. You don't want to send that to a radiologist. I'm surprised they put that in your book. That's a really ugly x ray. That is not an optimal x ray to send in for ribs. Exactly what you do not want to do. They're trying to encourage people to submit better ribs. More than likely, it's a really old image they just used for years. They never changed it out. It's probably the same image I learned on in school. A lot of these are the same ones that I, I, I remember a lot of these images from when I was in school, which is really funny. Especially the people in the positioning pictures. Same exact people. Do the patients get like any royalties or anything? I'm sure they do. I, I figured like. You want to you be a picture person? Yeah. The next no. Mission? A model? No. Go on, go on no. do it, Jay. <laughs> No, I'd rather take the images. It does look almost more dark. Yeah, the cloud will be very high. You can be paid for the rest of your life, Jay. So the next edition, we're going to see Jay on the positioning guy. Like, everyone, look, this is one of my students in the past. Jay, come on. Don't look like you said. You have to wear a Speedo, right? Mm -hmm. The guy's wearing a Speedo with the pictures. This is, this is it on you. What are you talking about? Just say it. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> So for me, would it be only scans instead of only fans? <laughs> See, that's a better joke. <laughs> I gotta give you that one. That was that was good. That was good. That's superior to my dad jokes. Yes. <laughs> only scans. I gotta use that. That's a good one. That didn't want to contribute to that. All right, guys. Um, this is an example of how your lower ribs should look. Once again, we should be showing eight through twelve. If you center correctly, you should barely see those crests popping up at the bottom of the film. And once again, start of our show, we want those ribs to really show up in that abdomen. Key factors are going to be that tight collimation, centering, but also those breathing instructions. If we do not do the expiration, these ribs will actually begin to fade away because we're not going to move the diaphragm properly out of the way. It's going to cover up those ribs that we're trying to extenuate on that lower ribs x-ray. So that's going to be 8 through 12. That's a very pretty lower ribs x-ray, aside from the marker missing. All right, so everyone's favorite. Let's get to those obliques in the last positions we're going to hit. I saw everyone going no, like shaking their heads. They're not that bad. We're going to go very slow and make sure that we understand this. If it's not making sense, raise your hand. I will re-explain because these oblique ribs are notorious for messing people up. Now, first off, when we talk about AP oblique ribs, what's the area that's the start of the show now? It's always going to be called the axillary portion. So no matter what oblique we do, we're focused on the axillary portion of the ribs. Not to say we're not focused on different sides, we are, but per the text, we're looking at the axillary portion. So same thing though, when it comes to doing upper versus lower. Depending on the patient, we may have to do an upper and lower x-ray. For upper, it's still recommended to have the patient stand because of the diaphragm. For the lower, it's still recommended to have them lie down. Most of the time, even me, I'll admit, if I start them standing, I'm going to end them standing. It's just inefficient to put them on the table. Mm -hmm. But if you're really about that optimization factor, that's what it recommends for those ribs, upper versus lower. So let me say it one more time. I don't want y'all confused. It's not incorrect. It's just talking about optimization factors of what is considered the better look for those x-rays. So let me ask you before I move on. First off, let's look at this picture on the top. 
This guy is in what exact oblique? What position? LPO. LPO. What do you think was his area of complaint? So you're partially right. You can say left, but that's only half the answer. Left posterior, because what's touching the IR? The left posterior. But be careful, that is going to change when we go to the other obliques. Do not rely solely on that factor. So let me go ahead and say, when we talk about AP obliques, we're always visualizing or elongating. When I say elongating, that's the star of the show. We're visualizing and elongating the side touching the IR for AP obliques. Therefore, LPO and RPO, we are focused on the sides that are down. So if I'm an LPO, I'm looking at the left posterior. The RPO, I'm focused on the right posterior. I put myself in an oblique to elongate that side and give a better visualization if they're suspicious of fractures in that area. Also, before I move on, I'm gonna go through all this again. Look at the positioning. Because the side down is the star of my show, that's the arm I'm gonna get out of the way. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm looking at, that's the arm I wanna elevate. And you'll see that will change for the other obliques here in a second. So people usually mix up the arms. Think for a second, what's the area that's the star of my show? Let's see, I'm doing LPO. I'm looking at the left side, the side down. I want to bring my left arm out of the way. Otherwise, what's going to happen? That soft tissue is going to get in the way. So I got to get it up out of the way, put it behind the head, put the other hand on the hip, and there we go. Like you're, you know, you're posing for a photo shoot, like this guy here, for your only scans picture. Jay's talking about. Yeah. Now, the centering is also going to change slightly from the AP obliques to the PA obliques. Typically, as a rule, guys, what have I said about obliques? You usually will always center towards the elevated side. The only instance where this is going to change slightly is for our AP obliques. We're going to put our centering more so directly on the sternum. We're not going to go towards the elevated side like you typically do. We're going to be right on the sternum, and that's going to extenuate those ribs that are actually touching the IR. Once again, when we go to the other obliques, that's going to change slightly, so keep that in mind. Once again, AP obliques. Is the only exception to the rule of obliques where you went to that centering directly on the sternum as opposed to that elevated side. Does that make sense so far? We okay? Let's move on. What's the degree of oblique? That good old faithful 45 number, the one we love to default to when we don't know what the oblique is, right? <laughs> but in this case, it is 45 degrees for RPO and LPO. Once again, for LPO and RPO, which are, are our AP obliques, the affected side is closest to the IR. And that's going to be very important for situational questions. I'm going to give you all some of these on your test. Once again, a patient enters the EC complaining of right posterior rib pain. Which oblique would you perform? RPO. RPO. Because it's right posterior rib pain. It depends on the side. It depends on the surface. It's going to change how we look at it. And that's also the side we want. Well, we're all so careful. Remember what I said. We're always mm -hmm. marking on our ribs only. We're always marking the side down. And I'll right. show you why when we get to the radiographs. Just keep that in mind. We're gonna get back to that. All right. So guys, arms once again. We're gonna abduct or and elevate the arm of the affected side. Get it out of the way. Make sure we're not covering it up the side that we're interested in. Rest that hand on the head. Place hand under or above head if we're recumbent. Other limb will be abducted and rested on the hip. So very important that we put those arms correctly as well, because if you have this arm relaxed, that soft tissue of the arm will end up getting in the ribs. So we gotta get out of the way. Once again, think about what are you looking at? What's the start of my show? Gotta get that arm out of the way. Y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, all right. start you know because of nerves you talk really fast mm -hmm. and you get done quick mm -hmm. and I've noticed just after four years like what used to take me like 30 minutes I can stretch out like two hours now I just 
it's it's um, it's amazing how that happens. Just you start talking slower, you know what to focus on, elaborate on. The first teacher thing, man, you're just like boom, 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 boom. Oh wow, I spent an hour of class. I'm done with that whole chapter. <laughs> She's still learning. She's still learning. But she does a great job. She's doing really good. I'm proud of her. It's all her. She's uh, she hasn't been teaching a year yet, guys. She's still brand new. And she's on a good trajectory. She did. I thought she had done it. That's right. I've only been teaching four years, and I haven't been doing that long either. All right, guys. So as far as where we put that cassette for the upper ribs on the AP oblique, same concept, guys. It recommends one half inches above the shoulders. For the lower, it's recommended to put the lower edge of the IR at the crest. And I will say on your obliques, most of the time, you can get them all on one. Uh, because of the way the ribs lie, usually you'll get that all in one shot. But if you have to go ahead and do that lower, you're going to do it the same way as the little baby lower ribs. You're just going to be obliquing the patient. Yes. So just to make it clear again, the lower edge of the IR is the same as the lower edge of the right. Well, if you're lined up correctly, yes. Yes. All right, so perpendicular to the center of the IR. Once again, when it comes to centering for AP obliques, LPO and RPO, the safest bet, as you can see right here, your sternum is about right here. You're going to go ahead and put that crosshair on your sternum for the AP obliques, LPO and RPO. Once again, it's a little different than the rules we've learned on obliques. It's the only exception to that rule. Put your centering directly on that sternum for your AP obliques. 14 by 17 or smaller if possible. For the upper, same concept, guys. Big star on this, do not forget. Upper, full inspiration. Lower, full expiration. Like a chest versus an abdomen. And what are we looking at, guys? Once again, it's that axillary portion of the ribs. Even though we know what side they're having pain, it's all considered axillary portion of the ribs. That is your main area of focus for your oblique ribs, no matter which ones you do. And that's just showing you, this is the patient's back once again. This will be their front. There's your central ray going directly to the sternum, and we're elongating that side that is down, the side touching the IR. you like to be grazing that sternal area. Um, like I said, normally on an oblique, you would always go towards that elevated side. But for this one in particular, the AP obliques, we're going to go ahead and just leave that in the sternum. Make sure that we really show off that side down. Don't cut anything off as well. It's the only exception to that rule that we see. Because when we go to the other obliques in a second, it's going to follow that same rule going towards the elevated side. I'll show you all here in a second. Still with me? Mm -hmm. Almost time for a break, I promise. It's 9 3. Look, I got one more slide here. Good. Two, mm -hmm. four, okay, five, you know what? Right? I'll let you make it. All right. <laughs> so, what are the main things we're looking at, guys? Once again, obliques, no matter what it is, we're focused on the axillary portion of the ribs, three of superimposition. We're going to look at ribs one through ten for above the diaphragm. Ribs 8 through 12 to the lower. It's the same as the AP we just talked about, guys. We want to see them visible to the lungs or the abdomen, depending if we're doing upper versus lower. And of course, we're elongating that side down, which we see right here. Now, I'm going to come back to this in a second after we take our break and do the next obliques. Once again, what do you see? We're, we're marking the side down. Now, keep this in mind. If I'm looking at an x ray and I see a left marker on a side that's obliqued and elongated, that's only ever going to be an LPO. If I look at the other side, it's elongated, and our right marker is down. The right side has the elongation from the oblique. That's only ever going to be an RPO. Now, that's going to flip when we get to the other obliques, and I'll show you why we always mark the side down. Otherwise, you could not determine what oblique you're looking at. So it may not make sense now, but we're going to look at that a little further after our break. We'll go to the next obliques. Do you have a question, Jay? I'm sorry, you go on. You good? All right, yeah, I'm just having trouble visualizing it. I guess I'll... We're going to come back to it. I'll show you why. 
Yes. You said it's a, like LPO, RPO. That's the side that's elongated. For LPO and RPO, it is a one-to-one -one relationship. Relation okay. LPO, left side elongated. RPO, right side elongated. That's going to inverse on the next ones. Thank you. These are some great reference images, guys. Once again, make sure you're learning how to count these ribs. Keep bringing that up because it's going to be very important for your tests. I'm going to show you. I know you're a about this marker thing. I'm going to show you. Because as you can see, you can still see this side over here. There will be a reason why if we're looking at the opposite obliques that we mark this side. Because that's the only way we get to determine if we're, if we're doing PA versus VP oblique. If I always mark the side that's elongated, it's always going to look exactly the same. It's synonymous. We could not make a determination of which oblique specifically it is. That's important because if we're focusing on an area in particular because of pain, We've got to mark that properly. Just trust me on this. Trust me on this. We'll come back to it. Let's take a break, guys. Let's take a break. If you still ask questions while you do